Hey, what's up? This is Travis Barker. Uh, I'm doing a lesson, a free drum lesson, courtesy of Bose for Music Gives Back. And my charity of choice is Lost But Not Forgotten. Um, it's for uh, little Chris, my assistant who passed away. It's his mom's charity. It helps families um, dealing with loss uh, and just families in general. So I'm really stoked to give back and uh, include that charity. So love you, Linda. Love you, little Chris. Um, I guess I'm going to start with just really a lot of basics. Um, I usually hold my hands, like hold my sticks, match grip, uh, like this, versus traditional grip. I hold traditional grip when I'm doing marching stuff. Um, but that's a whole other entire lesson. Um, so I, I will just like start off with like some warm up routines that I like to do. Uh, I'll start with eight on a hand. I'll go, I'm at like 120 BPM. I think that's probably a good tempo. Where I'll basically do eight on a hand, eight on a hand, then 16, eight on a hand, eight on a hand, 16. So it's like this. Now a little bit faster, and that's kind of the goal with these things is like, if you started drumming today and you write down the BPM, like, okay, I started the first week going 120 BPM. Uh, the idea is to increase it, you know, every time you practice and, and build up speed. Not that speed's the only important thing, but you, you know, it's definitely a good quality to have if you're gonna be playing drums. Here's 130 BPM. Okay, so I'll go up another 10 or 20 BPMs. I feel like this is a good exercise because it helps build up speed. And as long as you're doing like full strokes, kind of gets you ready for, for shows like when I play with Blink. Um, if I was just kind of using smaller, uh, like shorter stick height, I might not be as warm as I need to be in a situation like Blink or transplants or even uh, the live I just did with Post for Nirvana, because it is a lot of arms and a lot of, you know, full body motion. So I kind of like to, to get full strokes out of it. Here it is at uh, 150 BPM. Um, Go up to 170. Get up to, I think I usually get up to around 200 by the time I play a show. So at 190 now. Okay. 
찍어야 돼. 스 you never want to have like your whole arm moving or you'll see people get really stiff and start doing this it's more of a combination of your wrist and your fingers doing it if you don't include your fingers you're going to get really tired really fast and and i think you'll kind of max out as far as speed but 200 is usually where where you know probably like a, a great tempo for medium fast for blink stuff. I think we get up to like 220, 230 for songs like Party Song. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you guys is Paradiddles. If, if you don't know them, I love them. Uh, there's like single paradiddles, double paradiddles, triple paradiddles, inverted paradiddles, and honestly, you know, it's not just something you warm up on a practice pad. You can put it around the kit and use it everywhere. Um, but for those who don't know, okay, I'm back. Sorry, you guys. All right. So paradiddle is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Um, this can be used around the kit, you know, like the first note of each paradiddle, the right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, 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 can be on cymbals. Ooh, ooh. Toms, um, but kind of the same thing. I usually start at, a, you know, just pick a tempo. I'll start at like 175. No, you guys are gonna hate me if I start that fast. We'll start at 165. So it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Fast like double time it is. I guess like my whole goal in drumming is making my right hand and left hand even. So in a perfect world, any of these rudiments, I also like starting just with my left. Um, and I feel like just doing more rudiments with your left will help you lead with it with, you know, I don't know, you might see some drummers where they only hit crashes with their right hand, or they can only play like this, when they could play open hand, or lead with, you know, fills with your left hand. And I, I just think the more you do it, the, the more comfortable you'll get. And for me, as far as practicing, it's kind of like working out. Like a lot of people will go to the gym and just do stuff they're really comfortable with. I think with practicing, you have to really um, lean in on what you're not comfortable with so you are comfortable on the kit with it so a lot of the times when I'm practicing uh, and I'm not necessarily practicing for a show or something I'm, my goal is to kind of make myself uncomfortable and um, and then try to deal with it so 
Another uh, version of a paradiddle is an inverted paradiddle that I like. Instead of right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, it's right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. So that just a little faster is right. Left. So sometimes I like to go from regular paradiddles into that inverted paradiddle. So I'll play uh, a paradiddle on each hand regular and then I'll do inverted. So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, A little faster. do is just go from singles just basic your, your basic right left right left right left right left into something that's just called doubles you know you use it in as you know for stuff like double stroke rolls some people do this the buzz roll but but for uh, for for keeping your doubles clean and your singles clean I like to do uh, a kind of a warm-up routine that, that I made up where, where you just go from singles to doubles, singles, doubles. And then maybe when you're done with your right hand, you end with a paradiddle and then start with your left. So it's left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right. So paradiddles are awesome because when you put them at the end of exercises or warm-up routines, it, it, automatically ends you back on your right hand, your opposite hand. So uh, once again, kind of giving both hands a workout. So you can kind of put the paradiddle at the end of the exercise whenever you feel like changing to the left hand, starting with the left hand. So really, really slow. Um, set like 150 BPM. So I'm gonna do like singles into doubles. I'll Put a paradiddle at the very end of it, just so I can then start with my left hand. So it's... It's 
That's not it. So like that's a good variation to get back and forth from strong with your right hand to your left. But as you're getting comfortable with it, I would say just hit singles into doubles, singles into doubles, singles into doubles without stopping. So fast with this tempo it would be. With the goal being not being able to tell too much, it can't be too drastic between the doubles and the singles. And then starting with your left. Um, is there any questions going on right now? Like maybe I'll, I'll hit some questions while I'm right here at the practice pad if you guys want to answer them, ask them. Um, Right now I'm just kind of doing uh, singles, doubles, and the paradiddles. That's another variation that could be kind of cool uh, for your hands. So I'll hit like singles first, doubles second, and then paradiddles. And then that same kind of repetition over again. One, two, three, four. here okay could you show viewers some uh, stick twirl tricks oh yeah stick twirl tricks okay so uh hold on i think it it, it, it paused okay um stick twirl tricks uh, well first playing is the most important thing and being solid and and especially if you're in a band because you have to you know they're really depending on you to to keep time. So the, your most important job for being a drummer is keeping time and, and being, I like the drummer to be thought of as like the backbone of the band. So, you know, they're kind of playing off of you. You know, you shouldn't speed up, you shouldn't slow down. In a perfect world, you don't drop your stick, especially trying to do something flashy. You know, that I feel like that's like secondary. It's almost like a fighter, like, like learn how to fight real good and then you can put flashy kicks and flashy spinning elbows or whatever else like you know i guess get the basics down first but once you have those down um i think like the first twirl i learned when i was like just growing up and starting to play drums was just this in between you know your first two fingers your index finger and your middle finger and it's kind of like you put your stick in between these two and you get this motion and it's a little awkward at first but it gets more comfortable as you do it more. I mean, you could be, I, a lot of the times I'll just watch TV and I'll have sticks in my hand. Um, and just sit there twirling your stick. Or I've even been caught doing it driving in the car. <laughs> Where the person next to me is like, what is he doing? But I'm actually just getting better at twirling my stick. So it becomes second nature and I can just throw it in live shows wherever I want without, you know, it being uncomfortable and being like, oh, hold on, I need to, you know, get ready to throw my stick. Another thing is like, you'll see people cheat. Instead of playing match grip like this, as they're about to spin the stick, they'll wrap these two fingers over the stick, which isn't that uncomfortable, you can still play. But, you know, you'll be able to, if you have it already like that. There's also some people that spin this way and then some people that spin this way. So it's just, I guess, how you feel more comfortable. And also, you know, going back to the very first exercise we started with eight on a hand, 
once you get the spinning and the twirling ready, uh, you could do eight on a hand. And while this hand isn't doing eight on a hand, this hand is twirling. While this hand isn't doing eight on a hand, this one's twirling. You could be. When do you play traditional grip? Okay, um, so I grew up playing traditional grip. Someone asked this question. Uh, a lot of jazz musicians play traditional grip. A lot of cool drummers like, like Stuart Copeland played traditional grip. He was like one of my major influences when I was, you know, growing up. And it, it's, it's basically this style. Um, I also played like this in marching band. Uh, I think in junior high we were we were match grip. Uh, I think my second year of high school we switched to traditional, um, and I kind of got a taste of of traditional and marching in high school. I played for two years, and then I really, really, really got into it a few years back when I started working with uh, Ralph Nader and and Harvey Thompson. Um, and yeah, I mean it's it's really cool for marching. I don't think you're gonna really be able to do any marching videos or anything cool like this. I think there's a lot more options like this. You can do cool spinning, thumb spins, um, hi mom. Um, and it's just really fun. It's another, it's another way of playing the drums and I think it just helps, you know, create and develop your style. Um, not to say you can't play drum set like this. Some people can. And if, and if you do and you master it, you look really cool and uh, I don't know, it's really fun, but I think I've played drum kit for so long, match grip, it just makes sense, but I'm sure any of you guys that follow my Instagram or, or my YouTube, you see me do a lot of videos of marching stuff, and uh, I play traditional. A few people are asking, what kind of drumsticks do you use, and are they similar to marching sticks? Okay, um, here, I'll grab, will you grab me one of those? Yeah. So these are, these are my sticks that I designed with Zildjian. Um, they look like marching sticks because they're white. I think most sticks are wood color. I loved marching and it had such an impact on me and the competitiveness and uh, the chops involved in, in the discipline and in marching was something I really, really loved and I never let go of. And I think when it came time to design my sticks, I was really inspired by uh, my years of marching. So these are, these are my sticks right here. These are Zildjian, just my signature sticks. Um, it's my favorite stick ever. I tried playing like smaller sticks at one time. I tried playing lighter sticks. These are my sticks and I love them. Um, I, I couldn't play anything else and Zildjian makes great sticks, great cymbals. It's all I've played since I was a kid. Any wrist uh, or wrist exercises or stretching that helps you before playing or practicing? Okay, so someone's asking about stretches or like wrist exercises before playing. So once again, going back to like marching, this was this was a really popular one. Um, you basically hold the sticks like this in your hand. You'll grab this wrist. You put them both like that, and it kind of like uh, stretches your forearms, and you hold it there for as long as you need to. And then I think I went with my left first, so now I'll go with my right first. Same thing, and then I think with some of, you know, I, I meet a lot of drummers on tour, and they say like, oh, I keep you know tightening up or whatever. Just a good shake out will kind of help too. I don't know anyone that's probably been to our shows. I might even do it on some days, like. You can't really determine why it happens, but maybe you're just a little stiffer. It might be your workout you had earlier in the day or you slept wrong, who knows, but I feel like shaking it out like that, either with the sticks or just with the hands um, can help a lot. Also just conditioning, you know, like conditioning yourself, working out, like not to be buff or whatever, um, but for me, like working out is such a big important part of the drums because 
Um, between what I just showed you on here and practicing enough and having your chops where you want them and being in great physical shape, like battle ropes are something I love to do. Um, so when you are on stage or when you are playing with your band, any, any ideas that come to you and things you want to try, you're able to. And you're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to get too tired or my hands aren't fast enough or I'm not used to starting with my left hand. Just getting rid of all the all the, the kind of situations that might make whatever you're trying to come up with in your head harder. The, the idea is like to be able to think of something and execute. So yeah, like, you know, having your, you know, being in great shape and just exercising and having your stamina and, and your, your hands ready to, do, ready to go. You know, leading up to, to shows and tours, I play at least a few hours a day, just so I am ready when I get on stage. Um, Another twirl I love to do that's really easy to do is just keeping your hands in traditional yeah, match grip and just flaring the stick really slow. It's that. And once again, you could also do it backwards. I think it looks cooler frontwards. I do this one a lot. If you don't have time to get to this right here, you can get to this and you can also do it, you know, you can spin it as long as you want like this, but so this can be used too when you go to hit symbols. just two on each hand and you do your spin while this one is not doing doubles. While this hand's not doing doubles, you do your flare. So you just practice going from like a tempo, a slower tempo to a quicker tempo. practice every day um so leading up to tours and shows I'll practice like for example for the post show I just played a couple weeks ago it was like Nirvana tribute I found out a few days before that we were actually gonna do it um, so I literally listened to the 17 songs I was gonna perform and practiced like five hours a day I went through the set over and over and over again for me, for shows, I want to go into a show and not stressing out. I, I want to be extremely confident. So once I get there and once I play the show, I'm just having fun. I'm not really thinking about, oh, do I know this part? Do I know, you know, when this bridge comes in or, or how this song starts? I just want to, it just has to be muscle memory to where I can go out there and have fun. Um, but I feel like you have to, you have to really spend your time half of the time being like practicing and, and learning chops and stuff. And then, and then the other part of the time being a drummer is being creative because, you know, at the end of the day, I remember growing up, I'd be like, oh, I wonder if there's new drum fills I could learn. But really, it's all in here. It's all about being creative and figuring out for this song, this kind of fill makes sense. And maybe the fill doesn't exist, but that, that's your job to make it up. And I've, I've realized over the years, isn't, you know, my job isn't to be the, the fastest drummer in the world or or the most flashy drummer in the world or the best drummer in the world. It's to be, you know, be able to be creative and write creative parts and, and be a little bit of everything. Be flashy enough to, you know, have fun and keep people's attention because no one likes, or at least I don't, I don't like watching a drummer that's not fun to watch. And then writing great drum parts is the most important thing, especially if you're gonna be in a band and you're not gonna just be playing cover songs. Like being creative, figuring out what your style is and, and who you are. And, and my style is a mesh of marching, funk drumming, metal drumming, punk drumming, 
even listening to like program, you know, beats that I make like in rap songs, you know, it's just a combination of everything. So, so I think it's a little bit of everything. Practice being creative, practice having chops and being solid, practice your timing. Timing has got to be the most important thing as a drummer. Practice with a metronome right here. Um, if you're going to play drums, this is your best friend. Uh, when you go to record an album or a song or play live, chances are you're going to play with one of these. So you should be really, really comfortable and be great at playing with the metrodome. Just, you know, make it your best friend. Um, so I guess now I'll go and I'll, I'll show you some of the things that I had talked about on the practice pad on the drum kit. Um, one more exercise before we move to the drum kit is going to be the six stroke roll, which is right, left, left, right, right, left. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's why they call it the six stroke roll. There's, there's six strokes in this, in this rudiment. Right, left, left, right, right, left. Or it could be left, right, right, left, left, right. Right, left, left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left, left, right. Um, so you can do a, a pattern where you just create this, it's kind of like a roll effect where you just repeat going one way. And we'll, we'll pick the right, left, left, right, right, left. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna start it right back over again. Right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left. when I get over to the drum kit, I'm gonna put those accents on toms, I'm gonna to put them on crash cymbals. You're gonna kinda of see how like some of these rudiments that seem, I don't know, they never seem boring to me. I always like love just figuring them out on a practice pad, but applying them to a kit is the most fun because I know when I was a kid, the last thing I wanted to do was just stay on a practice pad, but a lot of these rudiments have a, a, a really cool place on the drum kit too. So I'm gonna move over to the drum kit now, kinda of show you some stuff on there. custom uh, drum company and uh, I play those drums because sometimes I want weird size toms or a weird size kick sometimes we even make drums just based after like an old jazz kit like this an old Ludwig kit but this just happens to be the kit that's at my house I grew up playing Ludwig uh, these are older Zildjian's just Adidas Zildjian's like the old school ones with the old logos some of my favorite um, but this is the kit I used during quarantine. I filmed a lot of videos on this. I filmed like, you know, the, the James Corden episode and, and the Paramore cover that Kells and I did. I've done everything on this kit. So this is my home kit. It doesn't really leave. But uh, I'm gonna start with the paradiddles. That was one of the first rudiments I showed you guys today. And that's the right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So you can easily put that between the, the hi-hat and the snare drum and it becomes a beat. 
Uh, I'll just put the kick on one, two, I'm gonna put it on one and three. And it just kind of shows you uh, applying the rudiments to the drum kit paradiddle. So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Second time it was the same exact thing. I was just adding the kick to the one of the three. One, two, three, four, one. So you could also, instead of just doing it between hi-hat and snare, you could apply it where I'll put the first accents of the paradiddle on the toms or the cymbals. So right, left, right, right, left, right. Symbols, I'll put a kick with that same with that same hand because if I go to the right symbol without it, it'll be kind of versus. So between the toms and the symbols, and then once again when I'm going to a crash, when I'm going to a right, I'm also accompanying it with a kick. So. stops it from ringing a lot, but I also use these big fat snare drum uh, dampeners. I use these on my kit that I record with. Makes the toms kind of feel like, um, I don't know, like Phil Collins vibes, like really deep versus This is actually for a 12 inch drum and I, I have a 13 inch drum here so you might see it fly off. But um, And honestly it keeps it a little quieter and, and keeps it muddy. 
Uh, I like I like my practice and rehearsing conditions to be a little grimy and uncomfortable and I don't know make me work harder versus I don't know it being easier and playing on a you know something that's easy to play. Sometimes I'll even put really big crashers up and and really big hi hats and then uh, go to my actual kit that I'm going to be toying with and it'll be a little bit smaller and uh, I just think it helps develop your speed. Um, one more thing I'll, I'll, I'll go through because I guess they're telling me I gotta wrap it up soon is uh, also the six stroke roll on the kit is one of my favorite things. Uh, I use it in a lot of songs and that's that rudiment that was right, left, left, right, right, left. Right, left, left, right, right, left. Right, left, left, right, right, left. And um, the same thing, you'll just put it over and over again so it's a rolling effect. So you just keep starting over. And um, I'll put the first accents on the toms and on the cymbals. Uh, so really slow, it's right, left, left. crashes always accompanied with a bass drum um, so I'll go really really slow and do a quicker tempo that, that you know shows you how cool it can be in, in, a, in a playing situation or even a soloing situation I, I, this is definitely one of my go-to's if I'm doing a solo um, so really slow six stroke roll right left left right right left or if you're left-handed left right right left left right from the drum, drum kit if you guys want one and then I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up another thing to do on your kit is singles between your, your hands and your feet um, I play single bass I love single bass um, I love single bass drummers uh, so something I like to do is just hands uh, singles between the hands and the feet just drum fills between uh, hands and feet? Um, well, okay, funny, he just said, any cool drum fills between hands and feet? Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool drum fills between hands and feet. Uh, a classic one, like Gary Bonham, is, is two hands, one feet, two hands, one feet. Or you could also do, you know, mix it up to where, you know, you figure out there's, if you're playing in, in just, you know, eight or four or whatever, and there's only four beats per measure, you know, figure out how you can subdivide your hands and your feet within that, that measure. So it could be... Which is basically two hands, one feet. Um, and like for me, I'll, like patterns like that because I write with my left hand, but... I lead with my right a lot. So, uh, stuff like this, I'm happily confused where I may lead the fill with my left hand. Or I might go. Because I've kind of gotten used to leading with either one. So, that's a good one. Once again, two hands, one kick.
three hands, one foot. Like this is starting with right, left, right, left, right. There's a stick of kick in between it. Cool, well, um, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. This was so fun, I could honestly go on for hours, uh, and they're stopping me, so. Uh, thanks again for watching, shout out to Bose. I love all your products. Um, I've been using them since I was old enough to listen to music, which is awesome, and uh, thank you for the generous donation uh, for Music Gives Back. Keep drumming.